Hello, welcome once again. This is the fuel pump that we discussed before. Now usually on the fuel pump side, which is considered the load side, because this is the load for all of this circuit, this is what we want to activate from the relay. So it's considered the load. Now the problem is over here, usually you get a computer. Computers are always involved. The PCM is always involved with turning on the fuel pump relay, to turn on the fuel pump, as you can see. First goes the fuel pump relay, which is activated. Then goes the fuel pump. Now, sometimes you have a computer controlling 12 volts. Sometimes you have a computer controlling ground. On this side, we don't have the computer controlling anything over here, as you can see. It's just pure the fuse, the 12 volts. This is activated, as we know from this. And then fuel pump is activated over here, going through ground back to the battery now but in order for this to happen this has to happen this is the difficult part as we spoke about before power train control module the computer brain for for all of these vehicles as you see over here this switch has to be closed question is where is this switch where can i find it look at the dotted line <clears throat> is it out of the line or is it inside the line it's inside the dotted line what does that signify? It signifies that this is internal. This switch is internal by the computer. If you would see the switch outside, then it would mean that it's a physical switch that we can control. Any, remember, anything inside this represents the computer. C2 tells us that this connector over here, which is pin 9, is a green <coughs> connector. This is controlled by the computer. When does the computer decide to close this? We need, we need this position is in the rest position. It's in the open position. We need the switch to be flipped. When this is flipped, as I have highlighted over here, <clears throat> it goes to 12 volts. Now you do not see 12 volts written here. That's the confusion of a, of a couple of viewers that didn't understand. 12 volts is not gonna be written all the time <clears throat> or a battery symbol is not gonna be written all the time. This is where these are the dealership, like I said, service manuals. You really have to know your stuff when you read these type of schematics. Not everything is written. They can give you the color of the connector, but they can't give you the symbol for the battery for the 12 volts. Anyway, this over here is 12 volts. When, we, when, when this goes to 12 volts, what happens? Now this relay, the coil is activated through ground, through ground. And then this is activated to turn on the fuel pump. When does he decide to close this switch? Let's say on many vehicles today, nowadays, the GMs, let's say the, especially the express vans. First of all, when you turn the key in the, in the, in the ignition, it looks for a couple of things. It looks for <clears throat> the fact that you have the correct key. Now there's a receiver inside the steering wheel and there's a transmitter on your key. This is the transmitter, this. It has to receive this signal from this to the receiver with all the codes, the VIN number, and all the necessary uh, information to tell the vehicle this person turning the key has the right key. He's not trying to break in. The anti-theft system, anti-theft deterrent system, they call it. Why? I can cut this off, <clears throat> the transmitter part, this black part, where the chip is, and just put this in. Will this fit into the ignition? It sure will, but it won't turn. It will not activate the starter. Why? Because the computer is looking for the information from this, that chip that's here that has all the information that's written for that vehicle. Again, the VIN number, codes, and everything. That is transmitted to that anti-theft module, which receives it and says, okay, there's a match. Now, this is what I'm looking for. This is the information I'm looking for. That means the person turning this key has the right key with the right transmitter on, with the right chip on it. Now, he'll talk to the BCM, the body control module. The body control module will say to the PCM, right? So we have three modules involved so far. Well, uh, uh, power control module will say, okay, the, uh, I'm going to give 12 volts to the relay. But the body control module has to make a request to say, okay, I need, to, I need you to turn on this fuel pump relay. He receives that email from the BCM, 
Okay, we're talking about two different things. The BCM is a charge of accessories. The PCM is a charge of starter motor and everything and fuel pump relays and everything. So again, I turn the key. I have the proper key. How do I know I have the proper key? Because I have this a transmitter, the chip. Anti-theft anti -theft deterrent system says it's a match. Let's turn on the car. Anti-theft deterrent system says everything is good. Gives maybe about 2 volts or, or 3 volts to the BCM when the ignition switch is closed. The body control module says now I need to turn on the fuel pump relay. Who's in charge of that? He is the PCM. Let me go to him. I'll email him. He received this email right from the body control module. He says now it's time for me to give this a 12 volts. He will send back an email that says, I received your, your request to turn on the switch. And I will respond to that. And I will acknowledge your response, your request, your request. Gives him 12 volts and then this. So now what are we dealing with? We're dealing with a couple of things. Let's say this does not turn on. I come over here and I measure 12 volts at the relay at this point. B7C2. Now I got a problem. This never turned on. Why? Is it the fault of the PCM? Is it the fault of the BCM? Is it the fault of the anti theft system? Is it the fault of the key? Maybe there's something wrong with the key. Look how many variables we're dealing with. If it is a fault of the PCM, how do we know? Can we jump this? This is internal. You, what you can do is just make sure everything else is working first by giving this a 12 volts. I was asked the question, can I jump it? Right? Usually that's the question, can I jump the, the, the relay? <clears throat> if you jump the relay, what's it gonna what's it gonna tell you? It's gonna turn on the fuel pump. You know this is good. What about this? What about this? <clears throat> what about the PCM? What about the BCM? What about the anti-theft return system? What about the key? You're left with too many variables. As soon as they give 12 volts over here, what will happen? <clears throat> this will turn on, and this should turn on. In one shot, you know all the, you know all this is good. Now, so if I get 12, all this is good, we're still left with a couple of variables. We're still left with, is the PCM good? Is the BCM good? And is the key good? Obviously, if you have another key, obviously the most the most Common sense thing is to use another key if you have a double, obviously. But let's say <clears throat> let's say we tried our second key, still doesn't turn on. So we take this out of the equation. We're left with the BCM and, a, and a three modules. That that's why you have to go back to the module to look at the BCM, the lines that are feeding it, which I made a video on. I hope you can refer to that video. Um, and that's that's basically what it's dealing with. It's a, it's not so easy. To turn on the fuel pump nowadays is computer controlled. To turn on the starter motor is computer controlled. To turn on your accessories, the power mirrors, the power windows is computer controlled. Unfortunately, that's how it is. So please refer to that video that I made, how to determine all the BCM, the PCM. It's on the channel, Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph. And it's on the other one, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto. Well, you see um, more... <coughs> Excuse me. You'll see more. Um, you'll see more of videos. Also, how to test the cables for resistance. If you have corrosion, I'm addressing the comment that someone uh, uh, acknowledged to me. If you have corrosion, many mechanics they go and they look at it. A visual is it? Does it have corrosion? I cannot tell after 30 years if it has corrosion or not by resist by by doing that. There could be rust on it. It could be anything on it. What do I do? I take a resistance test. I take the cables off and do a resistance test. Please look for that video. No start how to measure the resistance of those cables. If I have good resistance, zero ohms, I'm good. I have no corrosion, no rust, nothing. I can make good contact with the cables. I can make a good contact when I put a booster on it. That's the key element to me. To me. Okay? So anyway, please go to my uh, other one, Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph. Well, you'll have more videos hands-on and please subscribe to it please leave a like if you uh, um, found this informative like i said this branch is the key branch the orange one this green one cannot work until this works this one cannot work the fuel pump reel cannot work until 
The computer tells him to work. The computer cannot work until the body control module tells him to work. The body control module does not work until the anti-theft deterrent system is turned off. It tells him everything is okay. It's a go. So look for those videos. Anyway, thanks for watching.